Celtics Reddit podcast. It's Wayne Spoonie here. I am rolling solo, and I'm here to talk about the biggest news in Celtics dumb. Luka Samanic is a Boston Celtic, baby. Yeah, right? That's all that's going on, right? <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> Remember when we were worried about Jalen Brown retweeting Kyrie Irving. Yeah, that was fun. I miss that those days. That feels like a month ago, but was like three or four days ago. So I'm rolling solo. I'm going to do a short one here. Uh, I don't want to beat all this stuff to death. Um, but I do want to talk about, in this first section, I want to take on some takes. I've seen some stuff from people with a very strong opinions about this Ime Udoka situation. And if you haven't heard, and for some reason, this is the only source of Celtics news you get, Ime Udoka, the highly successful rookie coach of the Boston Celtics, was uh, a part of an internal HR investigation, probably run by outside legal counsel, into a potential affair with a subordinate staffer of the Celtics. Um, and it sounds like from the small amount of details we've gathered, we have, which is not a lot that at some point the Celtics asked him to stop. He did not. It sounds like maybe the subordinate also asked him to stop and he continued to pursue her. Um, so this came out via a leak from Woj Wednesday and the Celtics, I would imagine already had a press um a press conference scheduled ready to go we're planning on releasing it to the public on Thursday uh probably telling the team that morning uh some of the details that they were permitted to discuss so I think that was the plan investigation wraps up on Wednesday they meet with the team Thursday morning and then immediately enter the press conference to announce the suspension and provide some detail that did not happen because on Wednesday, someone leaked to Woj that Yudoka was getting suspended and it was a consensual relationship, which uh, I think from the way Brad and Wick were talking, we have some reason to doubt. So let me go to a Reddit comment here or a Reddit post, I should say, from user Cock Adawak, uh, a great username. And this is titled How Corporate HR Works. And I live in this world as well. Uh, so let's just say it's been a pretty frustrating couple of days listening to experts talk about how the Celtics should have done things and why they're doing things all wrong. Um, so this is a great post. If you know nothing about HR, if you know nothing about internal investigations or investigations conducted by a, a third party like a law firm, read this. It's pretty short. He does a good job of explaining why things have played out in the way they have. So check that out. So the first take I've seen, the Celtics, and let me just say, I'm not going to put anybody on blast. I'm not going to use usernames. These are just kind of takes I've seen by more than one person that I think are varying, varying levels of ridiculous. The Celtics should have given out less detail and kept this entirely hush-hush and in-house. Okay. Say they were able to do that. And then on Thursday, they announce, we'll say, one sentence press release. Ime Yuduka is suspended for a year. <laughs> you, what? <laughs> that would have been an absolutely fucking insane shitstorm. And everyone, everyone would have questioned Brad Stevens and Wick Grosvick's sanity for coming out of nowhere suspending Ime Udoka for a year and giving no details about it. Zero. So what do you get? 
what, what you just then you just don't explain anything from then on and you expect Yudoka and his camp aren't going to say anything then they can control the narrative and then you look even worse and i think you at least owe some bit of transparency to your constituency right the fan base May, maybe not a lot maybe not a lot but you're it's almost akin to the cover up is worse than the crime right it's like acting like Something happened, we know something happened, and he's suspended for a year. No further questions. Like, that's just going to make things even worse than they are right now. And let me say this. There is no good way to handle a situation like this. This is way too high profile. It's the type of incident occurring in 2022 where we are in a a world where power dynamics against between genders in the workplace are highly scrutinized as they should be not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's the type of story that gets legs in 2022. This was always going to be a massive story. This was always going to be a huge undertaking. And the Celtics had to tow a very fine line of between giving no information and the second take I've been frustrated reading, and that is the Celtics should have provided way more information, be more transparent. We have a right to know exactly what Udoka did so we can evaluate whether or not the Celtics response was appropriate. Okay. I got a Reddit comment from my guy, user Joe Jonesy. I always agree with his take, so it's no, no wonder I agree with this one. I think he's, he, he, he really lays the groundwork here for, for what's going on. He says, certainly the lack of transparency is frustrating from a fan's, fan's perspective, but like better than that, better that than have the private lives of the entire Celtic staff opened up for public consumption. The front office is making the best of a tough situation here, and I think they made the right choice both by taking a hard line with the full season suspension and keeping the details under wraps. I think he's spot on here, right? Fine line. You have to give enough information where you don't create the shit storm I just talked about where you provide absolutely no information, but... You don't want to give so much where you're violating the privacy of what I assume is a victim in this instance, right? Maybe she, maybe this relationship was consensual. Something went wrong at some point to get us to this point, right? And the way Brad and Wick were talking in that press conference, it sounds like she should be considered a victim. And I will say this. Even if this was fully 100% consensual, I still don't think the Celtics overreacted to this situation because the odds of it turning bad, really, it's just a matter of time until something like this blows up. I would argue that it's the inherent power dynamics between a high-profile, high-power head coach and someone who, according to TMZ, books travel for the team is just going to lead to disaster. And frankly, I think you could make an argument is inherently coercive. Um, but I don't want to take agency away from the woman. Um, if it's if it's truly 100% consent, consensual, well, guess what? It also leads to a toxic work environment because whether or not those two are copacetic and say they are, what about the coworkers who may have inklings or may find out about it? or may no then they're put in a difficult position where well do i raise this with hr do i raise this with my boss what if this person you know what if the woman that ime was um engaging in a relationship with gets promoted man if i was a coworker and i knew my coworker was banging the boss and they got promoted i'd probably think that had something to do with it that is not a culture that you want to foster, especially in a high-profile basketball team, right? 
where the media is just waiting to find a story to run with it. So even if this was fully consensual, especially if they asked him what they say is true and they asked him to stop in June and he did not, I think your suspension is absolutely, totally fine. I think it's completely reasonable. Which brings me to my next take that I want to talk about. The one your suspension was too harsh. So the players, I thought media day was today. So you kind of got the inkling, the players... One, they don't really know what's going on, which, look, again, I think makes sense, right? You do not want uninvolved parties to know about a confidential uh, a confidential investigation, right? Kind of makes it not confidential anymore if a bunch of people are told about it when they don't have a role in what actually happened, right? So uh, there's value in protecting the organization, not putting these players in a diff. A difficult situation like hey look if tatum knew everything if jalen brown knew everything and they go to media day do you really want to put these guys in a position where they either have to lie to the media or they have to draw very fine lines about what's appropriate to share and what's not hell no they don't want to be in that position either so telling them the bare minimum telling them what the public is told make sure they are never put in that position it's the It's the best way to go about it. I mean, truly, and you protect the confidentiality of the victim and what may have happened to her, which is priority number one. Anyway, so the one-year suspension, too harsh. Players, I thought, came off like, we still support Eme. Eme is a person. I get it. I get it. They weren't privy to this, right? Um... They probably heard consensual on that first leak, probably haven't done a ton of the digging in. They're asked to take Brad at his word. This is all sort of theoretical for them. What's not theoretical is they just spent a year in the trenches with this dude who got him over the Easter Conference hump and was lauded as an excellent coach. So they have all that experience. I I am not surprised a meeting with Brad Stevens totally undermined all that right especially when they're mum on the details again as they should be um i'm just saying i don't think it's super surprising how the players responded right he their relationship with ime is much more real and tangible to them than brad saying he did some bad stuff but we can't tell you what it is so i also think marcus said it i think the celtics handled this the as best they could or or great i can't remember the exact quote i probably should have grabbed that and thrown it up on the screen but i didn't sorry (laughs) um so was the one year suspension too harsh again i i I just went through why i don't think the one year suspension was too hard i kind of jumped ahead of myself here but that's that's okay it's just i'm just out here i'm spitballing baby um again you get into a relationship like this It creates a toxic, horrible work environment for everyone, even if it's consensual. And then if it's not consensual, I think one-year suspension is probably not harsh enough. He should probably be fired, maybe banned, maybe kicked over to, I don't know, some other country where (laughs) Australia, right? That's where the Brits used to send... (laughs) Used to send their prisoners. Yeah, you getting them, Ben. <laughs> you boys are getting them. No. Um, so I, I, what are you going to do? Suspend him for, for half a year when he completely disregarded an order, right, to stop the relationship? Um, and then it sounds like things got weird, inappropriate. I think a year is probably I, – I think he is going to be fired, frankly. They're just trying to figure out either if they can – get into a settlement agreement with him in some way so they don't have to pay him the full amount of his contract or there's their the attorneys they hired probably in in cooperation with Mike Saron who's the general counsel of the of the Celtics right the in-house attorney probably doing a legal analysis to determine whether or not they have sufficient grounds to terminate for cause so i've not seen Yodoka's contract um obviously 
he's a contracted employee, so they can't. Fi- he's not an at will employee, so you can't just fire him, right? Can't just fire him. You need some sort of cause. In employment agreements, I've seen generally it's vagueish terms like gross misconduct, things like that. You know, what does that mean? Okay, well, here's some case law, but you're never going to find case law that's exactly on point. So it's a difficult situation. That's a very difficult decision to make. So I think the year suspension is a smart interim measure while they figure out whether they have grounds to terminate. So um, I, you got to get them out of the workplace, right? Obviously. Uh, so I think the year suspension makes a lot of sense in that scenario, right? Buys you some time. It's harsh. Um, I don't think too harsh, like I said, but. I just don't get, well, they were having a consensual relationship. Like, they're two adults. Like, fuck the Celtics. If the average Joe would be terminated for this on the spot, man. Like, (laughs) ignoring a request from your employer, like, uh, this is not appropriate. Okay, I'm still going to do it. Okay, you're fired. You know what I mean? Like this is I I just I I I do not understand. I here's here's I guess what I'll say. What I'm trying to get at is I think all of these takes, all this criticism directed at the Celtics is I don't want to say a coping mechanism, but it's a way the way we try to like conceptualize and trying to make some sense of, of what's going on. We sort of try to assign blame to different percentages of different parties involved, right? Okay, I get it. Here's how we should assign blame in this situation. 100% to Ime Yudoka. This undermines everything we heard about this guy last year it undermines it all for me i mean it really does all this like leader this is not what a leader does this is not like someone who is a player's coach you clearly weren't putting your players first because you were jeopardizing your relationship with them your trust with the organization your trust with the fans your trust with the employees you put your self interest you put feeling good above everything most importantly he put it above his actual relationship with his actual fiance whom he has an actual kid with i mean a hundred percent of the blame should go to ime udoka we shouldn't be thinking did the celtics do this right did the what are the player like no this is udoka's fault period i think the celtics handled it about as good as you can considering the circumstances they have more information than we do um i I think they did an excellent job here right like keep i've saw keep it the celtics should have kept it more quiet apparently this has been going on for three months like it's a freaking miracle we're just hearing about it now so they kept it quiet until they were ready to the investigation concluded and they were ready to make a decision and then Udoka beat him to it, right? He Michael Scotted it. <laughs> He's controlling the narrative, right? He beat the Celtics to the narrative. Um, and, and you can see people have cla- like latched on to the consensual relationship piece. And I guarantee you if the Celtics were first, that wouldn't even have been a part of it. We wouldn't even be discussing consensual relationship. This entire discussion would be differently because we would have set the table with, it was consensual and then it became not, which is what the seemingly the Celtics party line is like. And that's got a whole different context to people, whole different context. So again, I want to turn to a, a Reddit comment by Jadamian Steinblent. Fuck Ime Udoka for putting the players in this position where now they have to answer a million questions about his behavior instead of focusing on basketball. And it's the first part of that I find such sage, sage. The first three words. Fuck Ime Udoka. This is on him. I don't necessarily feel too bad for the players, but I, I mean, I don't know how they couldn't feel betrayed in some capacity. 
but they're probably the least damaged out of this compared to his fiance. Maybe other employees who have been put in ridiculous situations. You never know. Like you just don't know. Um, so, and just the team in general, like what an absolute ridiculous act by Yudoka. And again, it undermines everything about the man for me. Which brings me to what I want to talk about really quick. And that is our new head coach, Joe Mazzula. I knew it was going to happen. The second I saw Brad was going to appoint um, Joe as the interim head coach, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. So Joe and I share an alma mater. That would be West Virginia University. Joe is on maybe the most beloved modern West Virginia basketball team of, of, of all time. Uh, and that is the 09-2010 Final Four team. Uh, Joe was a starting starting point guard on that went to the Final Four, which is a friggin' let's just say WVU doesn't make a lot of Final Fours. We're pretty good. We're the round of thir- thirty two, round of sixteen, uh, a few elite eights in the last ten years, but um, just the one. Well, not just the one, but that Final Four was really special, led by Deshaun Butler. Um, so I actually just want to show a really uh, that. That run had a tragic event in it, um, and I don't know if you've seen the clip, but Butler, the star player, I think he still got drafted like 16th overall by the Heat, but he injured himself in the tournament, and uh, Bob Huggins, our coach, legend Huggy Bear, just inducted to the B-Ball Hall of Fame, too, in Springfield, uh, ran on the court, and it was just a, a ridiculously great moment. So I'm going to play this here real quick for you. If I can figure it out. Oh my God, I'm bad at this. Okay. Yeah, so Butler just went up. Here, I'll... So, yeah. His knee buckles... And Huggins rushes out to the court, and he knows it's over for Deshaun. This is the Final Four game, last game of Butler's career. Butler's crying. He knows it's over. And then Huggy on the floor sort of caressing him, right? Showing, you know, just sad, tragic stuff. Well. Joe was on the court. There's Joe. <laughs> you can see Missoula right there. He was on the court for that. He was kind of one of the breakout stars of that uh, Final Four run for WVU. He had pretty. Um, he was a. It was a gr- great defensive player, and then sort of a steady hand at point guard, like eight points, four assists a game. You know, nothing too crazy, but. Um, So I know a lot about Joe Missoula, I guess is what I'm getting at. And I knew his history and his background well before this all hit the fan. So the second he got appointed, I knew it was going to happen. I knew his arrests from college would get brought up. And let me just be perfectly clear. If people want to judge him and people want to say, it's unforgivable to appoint that man as the head coach because of what he's done, domestic violence. Um, I believe he got in a scuffle with cops, and he also got caught urinating in public. Like, all right, you know, compared to the other two, that's like <laughs> uh, really too bad, right? You know, he was, I think he was at like a football game and he peed behind, a, yeah, that's stuff. I mean, come on. <laughs> but the other two, obviously, absolutely terrible, okay? I do not believe who's convicted for whatever that's worth. Um, I did that. That doesn't matter to me personally, whether he was convicted or not. I think he, I think he probably did it. I think he has in effect admitted such um, that he did do that. Uh, so 
if people want to judge him and say it's unforgivable and I will not support that man as the Celtics head coach, and frankly, I don't know if I want to watch the Celtics this year because he's the head coach, I will not begrudge, begrudge, begrudge you. There we go. Um, I get it. I do. In Joe's case, he had a drinking problem. No, I'm not giving this man any excuses. I don't think he would want an excuse. I think he owned up to it at media day today. He was, a, I guess, an alcoholic. He got help. He seems genuinely changed, like a different person. And he genuinely, truly regrets what he's done in the past. Maybe that's not enough for some people. And again, I would, I would get it if that is not enough for you. I hope. I like to think people can truly change. Um, I think there's plenty of people who say they've changed. And it rings hollow, and I don't believe them. Uh, Joe is not one of those people for me. So, I, I, you know, and I'm probably biased, right? But I'm not surprised where the conversation went. And again, I understand if people just are out on him as a person. I get it. He's, you make a mistake that bad. You do something that bad, you have to live with the consequences for the rest of your life. And um, so I'm willing to support him. Uh, he has not had a transgression for over a decade now. Um, so I, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what he can do as a head coach. I believe he led the summer league team to that time to the finals where we got crushed by the Kings uh, in the finals. So. That was a good performance. I trust him. I think he. everyone speaks extremely highly of his talents as a coach. Um, and I can tell you one thing. The Boston Celtics just gained uh, a ton of fans in West Virginia. I've had multiple people who never talk about basketball come up to me and say, Joe Mazzula is going to be coaching the Celtics? Um, I know people who watch the Cavs games, Cleveland Cavaliers games, because Mike Gainsey, who's an XWVU player, is in their front office. He's not the GM. He's like an assistant GM. And people watch their games just because a WVU X player is in the front office. So um, the Celtics are going to gain a ton of friends, a ton of fans in, in West Virginia and amongst the alumni, I guarantee you. So uh, I think that's kind of a cool little wrinkle that's relevant to my life. But uh, anyway, again, I just want to make very clear. I, this is not, from an optics standpoint, not ideal uh, that they appointed the guy with that in his past. That said, I think the Celtics made it very clear with how they handled the Yudoka situation. Um, where the, where they stand on treatment of women in the workplace. And I think if they had any inkling Joe Mazzulla was the same person he was 12 years ago, he would, have, he would not have been employed for the last three, four years at, with the Celtics. So um, Joe is also the ping pong paddle guy with Romeo Langford. So, you know, another feather in his cap. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's my take on Joe. Um, you know, I think if he has even an inkling, even a whisper of any wrongdoing, I will be out on him immediately. So, you know, it's like kind of the fool me once, like, but I think he's done enough to at least that I'm willing to at least give him a chance anyway. Okay. So very quickly, a couple things from media day. Let's get some fun stuff. Grant said his agent's working out an extension. Uh, I would just like to remind our listeners that Chris Forsberg and I, and I have a bet. Uh, one of us has to eat um, a uh, Vegemite sandwich on a live stream. <laughs> uh, if the other one is closer to Grant's extension, I'm at four for 60. He is at four for 56. 
And can I just say the Dunk Don guys did mock rookie extensions and they had Grant getting 18 million a year. And they called me crazy for 15 million. You called me crazy for 15 million. But no, those guys, they do this for a living. They are saying 18. So um, uh, it will be interesting to see if Grant does get the extension. Uh, and frankly, I'm willing to volunteer's tribute for Forsberg and eat the Vegemite sandwich for him if it means he'll just come on the pot again. <laughs> Uh, I thought I really liked some of Malcolm Brogdon's um, comments about how he picked the Celtics. That that really, um, you know, that gets the juices flowing on uh, on media day, man. I'm ready to watch these guys play. Um, so yeah, I, there was a few other things um, like the Rob stuff with his injury and how it was his decision. So. Can people shut up about the Celtics making people play? And by the way, the the medical staff for the Isaiah stuff is not with the team anymore. It's an entirely different medical staff. So stop it. Stop it. Okay. Oh, big news. Big news. Peyton Pritchard said he'd love to do the three-point contest. So, you know, big deal. (laughs) Anyway, all right. I'm I'm sure if you stuck with me for 32 minutes, I very much appreciate it. Uh, I don't think I. Um, before we go here, I'm gonna run. We've got a message from my guy Ben. Smooth Sack Summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas, and if you haven't been escaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. As summer comes to an end and we enter fall, or autumn in Australia, keep your boys clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in below-the-waist grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. Start the new season the right way and join over 6 million men, myself included, worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free shipping with the code CRPOD CR as in Celtic Reddit pod at manscaped.com I know for me countless times whenever I've attempted to put in the effort to tidy up down there using non-manscaped products there's always been this feeling of risk and then sometimes that has actually eventuated in some very painful experiences but with Manscaped the confidence factor is extremely high the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to keep your sweet sweet sack in check inside this package you'll find their lawn mower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear nose and hair trimmer which unfortunately i'm having to use more and more as i age i'm serious crop preserver ball deodorant which i should be using more crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs which are extremely comfortable and a travel bag to hold all of your goodies all of the above their lawn mower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge don't be alarmed by the term cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology the Lawn Mower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi-function on-off switch that can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Also, did I mention the trimmer is waterproof as well? So whether you're hopping in the shower or hitting up the lake, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Now that your sack is smooth, lather up with Manscaped liquid formulations to get that fresh ball full fresh. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat. Their Soothing Aloe Vera formula is the best in the business for below the waist freshness. And the Clear Drying formula keeps your sack looking and smelling good. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0. The Manscaped Boxes and the Shed Travel Bag that'll bring your comfort to another level at home and on the go. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with their Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutter tweezers and grooming scissors with the performance package your balls will be ready to impress but make sure you cover the rest with the shears 2.0 so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code crpod as in celtics reddit pod at manscape.com that's 20 percent off your entire order plus free shipping anywhere in the world with the code crpod at manscape.com keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh ball fall Thank you, Ben. Enter fresh ball fall, please, everyone. (laughs) I am. I'm there, baby. Um, Real quick, Jay Crowder, he's available. Don't see it happening. 
Um, the only way it makes sense is if we can trade Gallo's contract. Um, and that's not tradable until December 15th. And unfortunately, uh, it does not like look like that situation is going to work, take that long to work itself out. Um, I think Jay will probably be in pretty high demand. I hope he does not go to Miami because they desperately need him. Um, and he would really uh, uh, help them out a lot. Very important piece for the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, the only other way you can trade for Crowder is if you want to give up an actual God's honest contributor to this team. And I'm not sure Jay's an upgrade on Grant Williams, <laughs> frankly, at this point. Uh, and I wouldn't want to trade Derek White for him. I think Derek White's part of what makes this defense special. Uh, Jay can be a part of that, too. Um, I just think that seems like a, I, I think Derek White's just a better player, frankly, um, and certainly more offensively versatile. Uh, but I, I'd be willing to hear arguments on a White for Crowder swap. Uh, White makes, I think, a little more money, so we'd have to take something else back, but I'm sure we could find something. So unless you want to trade D White, which me, I, you know, I don't, it, the idea would be to keep the core and then add talent, not, shuffle the deck chairs around on the core. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think the Jay Crowder thing's happening, unfortunately, although he would be a very nice fit. Okay, with that, I appreciate all of you. If you made it this far with just me ranting and raving, I hope some of that made sense. I'm not sure it did, though. Uh, all righty, as always, um, check us out subscribe to the youtube i wrote something about sam hauser that was really stupid that you can read on my medium uh wayne spoonie on medium uh, follow us on twitter follow me on twitter uh we appreciate all the support from everybody thank you all so much spoonie out